kids. I'm Josiah Milky. I'm Jordan Milky. Welcome to Disney Animation Reviews. Well, Jordan, it's been a few months, but we're finally going to review the newest animated Disney feature film, Ralph Breaks the Internet. Yep. Um, but obviously, you know the drill. We've got history to get through first. Disney's last animated feature film was Moana, released nearly two years prior to Ralph Breaks the Internet. And if you saw our Moana review, you'll know that that film did really well at the box office, got really good reviews, and received two Academy Award nominations for Best Animated Feature and Best Original Song for How Far I'll Go, losing to Zootopia and City of Stars from La La Land. In 2017 and 2018, even with two years to go before Ralph Breaks the Internet, Disney still had plenty of stuff to keep fans occupied. There were live-action films, like in 2017 there was the live-action Beauty and the Beast, which was a bigger box office hit than I think anyone was expecting. Yeah! Um, and then for Christmas 2017, they had Star Wars The Last Jedi, the sequel to 2015's Star Wars The Force Awakens. Mm -hmm. In 2018, there was um, redos of classic films, because they had the live-action Winnie the Pooh film, Christopher Robin, and the Mary Poppins sequel, Mary Poppins Returns. A Mary Poppins sequel more than 50 years later? What's that about? I don't know. Uh, both those films I read did pretty good, both with critics and at the box office. When Disney tried to do their own stuff with A Wrinkle in Time in Spring of 2018 and The Nutcracker in the Four Rounds in Fall, those movies were a disaster. Oh, come on! We saw Nutcracker for my 21st birthday and I really liked it. Um, it's, your opinion isn't the only one that matters here. They both got mixed reviews and they both flopped at the box office. Want well, my advice? Um, stick to the original Nutcracker Tchaikovsky Ballet, or at the least been a halfway decent film version. Like the Barbie version. Oh, come on! Follow me with a good song! Okay, you gotta admit, Andrea Bocelli is a good singer. Yes. So, so there were all those live-action films. On TV, they had uh, Disney Channel movies like Descendants 2, which is, of course, the sequel to 2015's Descendants. Yep. They had, uh, last year, they had Zombies and Freaky Friday, the 2018 musical version. Is that, is that like the third film version they've done of Freaky Friday at Disney after the 70s version and the 2003 Lindsay Lohan version? I think so. There are also plenty of TV shows to keep fans occupied, like the Tangled series, which Yay! is your favorite. Um, the new DuckTales series, <laughs> Vampirina, a new show for the Disney Junior Lovers, and my personal favorite, the Big Hero 6 TV series. <laughs> they also had the new Muppet Baby series that debuted on Disney Junior last year. Aww. Um, also in 2018, uh, Frozen opened on Broadway. We've listened to the soundtrack, and it's very, very good. Mm-hmm. And then in 2017 and 2018, we had not one, not two, but three Pixar movies. Wow! Summer 2017 had Cars 3, which is, of course, the sequel to the first two Cars films. Cars 3 got much better reviews than Cars 2, though not quite as high as the original Cars, but pretty close. Yeah. And it also didn't do so good at the box office. Ow! Thanksgiving 2017 had Pixar's Dia de los Muertos movie Coco, which got really good reviews and did really well at the box office, and won two Academy Awards for Best Animated Feature and Best Original Song for Remember Me. Rightfully so. Mm-hmm. And then summer 2018 had the Pixar sequel I think everyone had been waiting for, Incredibles 2. All right! Incredibles 2 was a billion dollar grocer at the worldwide box office like Toy Story 3 and Finding Dory before it. It got really good reviews and received an Academy Award nomination for Best Animated Feature. More on that later. Subject of today's review is Disney's latest animated feature film, Ralph Breaks the Internet. And we're actually doing this review uh, just about a month after this film came out on Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. I'll never forget when I first heard they were doing a Rocket Ralph sequel. Um, I was working at Walt Disney World um, as part of Crew, Campus Crusade for Christ. Okay. I was on summer mission, and we all had jobs uh, doing fast food service at Walt Disney World. Um, and during our breaks, we actually got to spend time in the parks, which was fun. And I'll never forget, I was checking out my work hours, and right there on the site, 
on the Walt Disney World employee website was an announcement that they were officially doing a Wreck-It Ralph sequel. It was at the end of June 2016. I had just seen Finding Dory, <laughs> and I was so excited that we were getting a Wreck-It Ralph sequel. Yes. Um, originally the film was going to come out on March 9th, 2018, but was pushed back to Thanksgiving when A Wrinkle in Time took the original March 9th spot. Wow. Uh, so we had to wait a little longer than I expected, but it was totally worth the wait. And I'll never forget, you and me, uh, we actually went to see it, um, at the AMC Theater here in Johnston. Where we live. Johnston, Iowa. Uh, we actually went to see it the night before it officially opened. Um, we actually went early for dinner and a movie, because they have dinner options at the AMC Theater now. Uh, we shared a flatbread cheese pizza, mm -hmm. and then we got our snacks and our tickets and everything. And we went into the theater, and when they started the previews, something was wrong with the sound. Yeah. And it was about halfway through the previews that the theater people realized something was wrong, so they had to turn it off to get the sound fixed. And we ended up waiting about an hour past the original scheduled start time. Um, and they started with the sound fixed um, um, at the start of the second half of the previews. Basically, once they discovered what the problem was, they fast-forwarded ahead to where they had discovered the problem. So they ended up starting the movie with the previews they did show about an hour after the original scheduled start time. But it was totally worth the wait. Uh huh. But if you know, if you know me, I get pretty antsy when something goes wrong. Or... Yeah, but um, yeah, but I was patient. I and I was willing to go and ask what the problem was. Um, if anything was going longer than I thought, but they handled it pretty well. Mm -hmm. So Ralph breaks the internet. Actually, um, the idea for a Rock It Ralph sequel had several different iterations. The first was actually about Vanellope becoming. Absorbed and uh, and taking on a superstar vibe uh, because she became a fan favorite among internet users and Ralph had to get her back to her regular self and he actually got thrown in internet jail. Mm -hmm. There he met Nosemore, who at that point was a broken search engine, huh. and they teamed up to try and get out of there and get Vanellope back to her normal self. So then, the story started to take more of the turn it is now, where Ralph becomes internet famous. Which did end up in the final film. But in the original version, uh, he got he received the enmity of a antivirus software program named Beth, built to eradicate viruses. Uh, she was an internet uh, software cop who ended up being a, the villain of the film, trying to erase Ralph with a virus that in turn nearly shut down the internet. In the end, they decided that as long as the story in the internet was fun, what really mattered was the friendship between Ralph and Vanellope from the original film. Yeah. And that shaped it into the Ralph Breaks the Internet we have today. At the time we're doing this review, Ralph Breaks the Internet has just passed the $200 million mark in America and has made about $526 million worldwide, thus surpassing the original film. <laughs> Not as high as Incredibles 2 with its billion dollar gross, but Ralph Breaks the Internet still made quite a bit of cash, and it also got really good reviews. Yes. And was nominated alongside Incredibles 2 for Best Animated Feature at the Academy Awards. Yes. Um, having watched it a couple of times since it first came out, I can easily say that Ralph Breaks the Internet is the best sequel that Walt Disney Animation Studios has done. And that's saying something because they haven't had very many sequels. In fact, if you really break it down, they've only had like two sequels before this. Three if you count the 2011 Winnie the Pooh film, but I don't really, it doesn't really tie into uh. anything else that Winnie the Pooh has done. Mm. Um, but they've had Rescuers Down Under, which was the sequel to Rescuers, and then Fantasia 2000 was their Fantasia follow-up. Right. But Ralph Breaks the Internet, this blows those, this completely blows those other two films out of the water. Yes. Um, but rather than have me explain it, uh, let's just dive into the story of Ralph Breaks the Internet and why I, we think it is the best sequel in the canon so far and one of the top films you should watch in this canon. So the story begins six years after the first movie, 
which makes sense because it's been six years since the first movie came out. Yes. And Ralph and Penelope, still voiced by John C. Riley and Sarah Silverman, have this day-to-day -day routine where they go to work, um, they do their jobs in Fix-It Felix Jr. and Sugar Rush, and then they spend the night uh, playing in different games around the arcade. They go to Tappers for root beer, and in the first five, like, five minutes, we get our first Disney Easter egg, where they actually play in the video game of Tron. Unfortunately, that game was a virus, and we're going to get stuck! Right, so, but I'll be stopped wanting to hang out in there. Um, this is a routine that Ralph enjoys, but Vanellope's grown tired of, which I can totally relate to that, because, uh, here in Iowa, um, I love practically anything that has to do with Disney, which is why I want to work at Disney, and I want to start working there right away after I graduate college in two months, but my dad... Uh, he's like, you know, take it slow, baby steps, uh, get some other kind of filmmaking jobs around the county, and then maybe try Disney in a few years, and I'm like, no, I want to go to Disney, like, right away, so, I, I totally relate to what Ralph and Vanellope are going through. Uh, one day, Mr. Litwack plugs in a new Wi-Fi router, and uh, Vanellope told him or something new, because she's apparently been feeling unappreciative of the challenge that Sugar Rush offers. Um... So, to help Penelope get over the doldrumness of doing the same thing over and over, uh, Ralph decides to add a new track to Sugar Rush. Which oh. could be kind of uh, threatening for him because he's not in his own game during gaming hours. But Fist of Felix Jr. is old and people hardly play it anymore, so it's not too big an issue. Unfortunately, because Penelope uh, tries the new track and ends up going against the control of the steering wheel, the kids playing the game accidentally break the steering wheel off, um, which results in Mr. Litwack deciding uh, that he can't afford a new part because apparently the company that made Sugar Rush went bankrupt years ago. Although they managed to find a replacement steering wheel on eBay, unfortunately, he, Mr. Litwack decides that $200 for a replacement steering wheel is too expensive. $200 for a lame steering wheel? That is not expensive! It's less money than a car would cost. So Litwack decides to, to unplug Sugar Rush, running around me our friends homeless, and I'll be terribly upset by this. They manage to get homes for most of the characters. The only characters that nobody will take in are the other racers. So, they get adopted by Felix and Calhoun, still voiced by Jack McBrayer yeah. and Jane Lynch. Felix and Calhoun have been married for six years now, and they want to spice things up. The Protector tells them adopting 15 children is the wrong kind of spice. But they, they don't But they don't listen. And, but the kids make a mess. And, of course, um, like two seconds after they decide to take the kids in, they're just running amok. Yeah. Um... Uh, feeling overwhelmed! Felix goes to tap where Sir Ralph is. Um, and when they're sharing their problems, uh, they bring up a pronunciation of eBay. As e-boy! Uh, which then leads Ralph to decide that he and Vanellope should go to the internet, find eBay, and get the steering wheel. Thus, um, it can be delivered to Letwax, the game, uh, will be plugged back in, and all those kids living in Felix's apartment- And destroying his sanity! Uh, can go home. Ralph and Vanellope go to the internet, uh, which, um, which really doesn't become the internet until Mr. Letwack turns it on. Right. Um, but once they get there, it's like... Amazing. It's like the big... It's like if you were to go to a big place like New York City or Los Angeles or something, uh, whereas Mr. L whereas Letwack's arcade is like a small town, the internet is like the big city. So they find eBay, and they meet Nosemore, who's now, uh, working. Yep, Nosemore is a search engine that directs them to eBay, and, uh, he's, a kind of a combination of Droopy from the old Warner Brothers cartoons, and Professor Owl from those Disney adventures in music shorts that they did in the 50s. Uh, and it was on many of the Disney thing albums. Yeah, that too. Nosemore is voiced by Alan Tudyk, who is now considered something of a good luck charm for the studio, in the same way that John Ratzenberger is for Pixar. Mm -hmm. Because Nosemore has been in every single animated Disney feature film from Walt Disney Animation Studios since the original Rocket Ralph, when he was the voice of King Candy. 
who does not appear in this film. Right, because if you saw the original, you know that uh, King Candy gets killed at the end. Anyway, no more directs Alvin Penelope to eBay. They find the steering wheel. But unfortunately, they have to pay for it. Um, luckily, a pop-up ad named J.P. Spamley, voiced by a, some, for some reason, uncredited Bill Hader, who has been in the last couple Pixar movies. Uh, he teases us to get rich by playing video games, and gives them an ad for our car in a game called Slaughter Race. That's more than enough money for them to buy a steering wheel. Ralph and Penelope sneak into Slaughter Race, which is basically the Grand Theft Auto version of a racing game. And they almost make it out with the car, but they get caught by the non-playable characters, led by Shank, voiced by a current Wonder Woman, Gal Gadot. Shank is one of my favorite new characters. She's basically a combination of Vanellope for her racing skills, and Calhoun for her uh, body shape and personality. Despite the fact that they're unable to take the car, Shank does help by sending them to BuzzTube, where they can make money by making hilarious videos. <laughs> At BuzzTube, they meet the head algorithm, Yes, voiced by Taraji P. Henson. Now, for a, for a while we first heard about her, we, we, were, we, we thought that Yes was going to be the bad guy. But it turns out, like Shank, Yes is totally sweet once you get to know her. And one thing I like about her is her no-quit attitude. Um, about the different kinds of videos they make. Mm -hmm. um, and I love the different outfits. Uh, she goes through five costume changes in this movie. My personal favorite was the boat captain outfit with the sailor hat. Mm. So, Yes makes Ralph a BuzzTube star, and he starts making all these great videos. <laughs> he, he puts on makeup, he cooks, he paints stuff. He gets stung by bees! <laughs> and it's fantastic. Um, and then, to help Ralph, uh, Vanellope, uh, this is my favorite part, this will probably be everybody's favorite part. Yes! Vanellope becomes a pop-up and goes to ohmydisney.com. It's a site I regularly visit practically every day, and there are Disney characters everywhere. Right. From all of Disney's properties, from Walt Disney Animation Studios, Pixar, Lucasfilm with Star Wars... Marvel, and even a few Muppets make cameos. But my favorite part is definitely the Disney princesses scene. All the princesses together in one room. room. That is definitely the highlight for many for this movie. Uh, because Vanellope gets to meet all of the Disney princesses. And at first, when Vanellope intrudes on their property, they don't seem like a friendly bunch. Uh, because they attack her with whatever weapons they got. Cinderella even smashes her glass slipper against a chair and holds it with the pointed edges out. But then, Vanellope, who at the start of the film would prefer to just be Vanellope rather than Princess Vanellope, even though the code says she is a princess. She reveals that she is in fact a princess. Which then leads to her, all the princesses to ask her a series of difficult trivia questions about what kind of princess she is. Like, do you have magic you abilities? Do animals talk to you? Were you kidnapped or enslaved? And some people actually have problems because the kidnapped or enslaved question is asked by Belle and Rapunzel. Now, Rapunzel I can understand, but Belle was not kidnapped or enslaved. That was her choice. To take her father's place in the Beast's castle. Although my personal favorite question comes from Ariel when she asks Vanellope if she made a deal with an underwater sea witch. Oh, she took your voice in exchange for a pair of human legs? And then Ariel does the same toe wiggle that she did in the Little Mermaid. And like, you know, this is the first movie where we see Ariel the human for the whole thing. Uh, well, yeah, that's a minor thing, but I like that she does the same toe wiggle she did in her movie. Finally, Rapunzel asks the million dollar question. Do people assume all your problems got solved because a big strong man showed up? Yes! What is up with that? She is a princess! <laughs> and so, Vanellope is accepted into their group. And they admire her, her casual wear. Uh, that inspires Cinderella to have her mice make comfy outfits for the princesses, too. Each one with a joke or inside reference to the princesses' movies. My favorite is Anna's, which says, Finish each other's on a sandwich. Which is a reference to the line, We finish each other's sandwiches from the song, Love is an Open Door. Yeah, and Ariel wearing her clothes, and I thought we were real life, Oh yeah, shirt. Um, which and we'll, singing. We'll talk more about the music later, but... Once they have enough money, um... Ralph goes to get the steering wheel and is successful. But before that, um, when he's trying to get more money, um, he 
inadvertently goes into the comment section. And this is one thing I really like about this movie, is that they don't shy away from the dark parts of, of the internet. Sure, there's lightheartedness with all the videos and the characters and everything, but then Ralph goes to the comment section and discovers that not everybody loves what he's doing. It's kind of a... It's similar to what Judy and Nick were dealing with in Zootopia, but this is the internet version where um, people... Not everyone is as friendly as Vanellope. Uh, there are people out there who will be mean to you, and the hard thing to do is to not believe it. You just gotta believe that you yourself are good, and you've got friends and family around who care about you, that it doesn't matter what anyone else yeah. says. Yeah. So, after meeting the princesses, Vanellope is torn between going back with Ralph to get the steering wheel and save Sugar Rush, or... Um, in a moment of self-discovery, uh, she wonders if maybe Slaughter Race should be her home because um, she gets magically transported back there. And this is where we get probably the biggest surprise of the movie is when Vanellope um, sings. Wow. Because when Ariel started singing and Vanellope got confused, the princesses explained that songs help tell their dreams and they inspire Vanellope to do the same, which leads into her going back to Slaughter Race and singing a song about it with Shank and the crew. This was actually Gal Gadot's first singing role in a movie. Oh. And uh, I have to say a word about the song um, and about the people who wrote it. The Slaughter Race song had two lyricists, Phil Johnston, one of the directors, and Tom McDougall, the music production supervisor at Disney. But... The composer of the song is none other than eight-time Academy Award-winning composer and lifelong Disney family member, Alan Menken. Which is perfect because Menken has done the music for Tangled and every single official Disney princess movie from the Renaissance era, except Mulan. Right. And this song, to me, definitely feels like an Alan Menken song. Because uh, it's in a weird environment, and you've got all these different characters doing their dances and different things. It actually feels like songs like that that we've heard before that Menken has done. Like the Gaston song in Beauty and the Beast, or the Thug song, I've Got a Dream from Tangled. I mean, obviously Sarah Silverman can't sing very good, right. but works for me. I'm actually surprised this song wasn't nominated for an Academy Award. So, does Ralph get the steering wheel and they save Sugar Rush? Does Ralph and Vanellope's friendship survive that Vanellope can stay in Slaughter Race but still be friends with Ralph? And most importantly, where on earth is that scene from the teaser trailer where the little girl in the car is playing the tablet game where you feed pancakes to a bunny and kitties to a milk sh and milkshakes to a kitty, but then Ralph and Vanellope crash the game, overfeed the bunny, and then he explodes! Well, it's kind of hard to answer those questions without giving any more spoilers away, so we're just going to leave it there. Um, but now is a good time to talk about what we like, what we dislike. Um, well, first off, the Disney scene is definitely the highlight for me. Mm -hmm. Besides the princesses, you've also got characters like the Stormtroopers from Star Wars, Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh, Grumpy from Snow White, some Marvel characters... And my personal favorite, of course, Buzz Lightyear from Toy Story. I also love the voice cast. Um, not just the returning voice cast with John C. Riley and Sarah Silverman and all those people, but also newcomers like Gal Gadot and Taraji P. Hansen and Alan Tudyk with his new role as Nosemore. And then uh, there's the moment where Ralph goes to the dark net and meets uh, this virus-making guy, Double Dan, voiced by Alfred Molina. Yeah. And Double Dan is the closest thing you got to a villain in this movie. Though the real antagonist is Ralph's own insecurities. Because one thing the filmmakers wanted to do different from this film was they didn't want to do a surprise villain like they've done both at Disney and Pixar over the last several years. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, Double Dan's kind of creepy, but... <laughs> I also like uh, that both Ralph and Vanellope go through changes in this film. Because Ralph wants everything to be the same and is worried that Vanellope getting so much into the internet is going to take that away. While Vanellope at the same time is torn between staying with Ralph, who's this friend she's known for years, and wanting to stay in this new world she's just, she's just discovered. And Shank, despite the fact that she's um, um, on the outside kind of hard and tough, 
um, deep down inside, she's got a soft, she's got a soft heart, and she acts like a big sister to Penelope, and, uh, helps her figure out what choices she needs to make in life. Uh-huh. When I first heard the Sugar Ray song, I was like, okay, that isn't right! But we can't just abandon Sugar Rush like that! Um, uh, but you've grown to like it now, right? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. So yeah, the setting, the settings and the characters uh, are definitely made this film a worthy follow up. I think literally my only problem with this movie is that we don't see much of Felix and Calhoun in this. I was actually kind of hoping for another scene or two in the middle that showed how they were able to handle the Sugar Rush kids, um, but we never see that. We only see the beginning and end of it, so that's a little disappointing. Yeah. But. Um, and speaking of voice talent, almost everybody uh, that cameos at Oh My Disney and comes back from Wreck-It Ralph has original voice talent, and or people that have voiced them in the last couple years, including most of the original voice actors of the princesses. They even got Paige O'Hara back to voice Belle, even though Paige has gotten older and has aged out of voicing Belle. Yeah. Um, although Ariel easily takes my vote for MVP, Most Valuable Princess. Yes. Um, obviously the classic princesses, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, and Snow White, are not voiced by their original voice actors, because first of all, Snow White and Cinderella's original voice actors are dead, and two, Aurora's original voice actress, Mary Costa, is too old to act anymore. So Cinderella and Aurora, and Aurora are voiced by their current voice actresses, Jennifer Hale and Kate Higgins. Snow White's actually the only character they had to completely recast in that princess scene, um, she was voiced by Pamela Ribbon, one of the writers who also came up with the princess scene. Oh. She actually just did scratch voice of the character in the boring process, um, but it was so good they ended up casting her in the part. That sometimes happens at Disney and Pixar when someone who does the scratch voice is so good they end up getting cast in the part. Like when Mark Walton was cast as Rhino the Hamster in Bolt. Or when the late Joe Ranft was cast as Heimlet the Caterpillar in A Bug's Life. You know, I'm a beautiful bird to fly! Uh-huh. Um, and on the Rocket Ralph character side, again, most of the original voice cast comes back, with some of the actors returning for new parts. The only character they had to recast on the Rocket Ralph character side of things, unfortunately, was Tapita one of the Sugar Rush racers, because for some reason, Mindy Kaling was unavailable. But they recast her with celebrity impressionist and Saturday Night Live star, Melissa Villasenor, who doesn't sound quite like Mindy Kaling's Tapita, but it's really close. I put her on par with Jim Hanks, Tom's brother, when mm -hmm. he's covered for Woody in Toy Story, and the new kids that voice Nemo and Dash in Finding Dory and Incredibles 2. Ralph Breaks the Internet is directed by Rich Moore and Phil Johnston and produced by Clark Spencer. Rich and Clark directed and produced the original Wreck-It Ralph and Zootopia, and Phil was a writer on both of those and returns as a writer here, but this was actually his first directing role. Oh. And uh, he and those boys did a really good job. Um, both Incredibles 2 and Ralph Breaks the Internet received several animated feature nominations, including the Academy Award, um, but they've, I think, lost every animated feature award they've been nominated for to Sony Animation and Marvel's Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. But in this case, um, it's okay, because Disney and Pixar have had plenty of good wins for the last few years, and Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse was actually a worthy contender to win. Uh, I've seen it a couple times myself. It's actually really, really good. Check it out yourself. So that's our thoughts on Ralph Breaks the Internet. Um... The only reason I put it a little lower than Zootopia and Big Hero 6 on my ranking of all the animated Disney features is because I wish we had had more Felix and Calhoun. Yeah. But other than that, um, you can see why this, I think, is easily the best sequel in the Disney animated features canon. So definitely give this one a watch. So let's talk about the home video release from last month. Uh, let's see. The highlight bonus feature is a 33-minute behind-the-scenes feature called How We Broke the Internet, uh, which talks about um, what it took to make this film. And I like that they break it down into sections. So we, they talk about the different characters, the different worlds, etc. There's also deleted scenes, uh, feature right on the hidden Easter eggs in the film, which seems to be becoming a staple of Disney feature animated home video releases now. Um... There's music videos, a behind-the-scenes look at the making of the music for the film, mm -hmm. and the digital copy comes with a feature where they actually go to driving school 
uh, to learn to figure out how to create those amazing driving scenes in Slaughter Race. The only bonus features on both the Blu-ray and the DVD are the music videos. While I'm pretty happy with the bonus features we've got, um, I am a little disappointed that they couldn't include an audio commentary, nor are there any animated shorts. Which is weird, because when I first read online, uh, a couple months before the movie came out, that they were going to have a short film, uh, they were going to redo Super Rhino from the Blu-ray and DVD release of Bolt, uh, probably because Bolt was turning 10 on the same day this movie opened in theaters. Yep. Um... They were going to redo Super Rhino with new credits and a new song that Rhino was going to sing. He was going to sing Kung Fu Fighting instead of the Hannah Montana theme song. Uh -huh. But when we saw the movie, both when Jordan and I saw it, and then when I saw it a month or so later with my dad, Ralph Breaks the Internet didn't have a short film. Unless you count that short introductory video for the movie itself that the directors and producer did. Well, obviously I was a little bit deceived. Ha! <laughs> And there's more Felix and Calhoun either. Yeah, I was hoping for a short film that showed Felix and Calhoun's side of the story when they were watching the kids. Uh, but we didn't get that either, so that was a little disappointing. Mm -hmm. um, while I am really happy with the bonus features we got, I feel like Disney, both Disney Animation and Pixar are falling into a formula with their bonus features. Because um, Disney Animation, they'll have the lead scenes and behind-the-scenes stuff on the Blu-ray. And on DVD, all we get are a short film when they do have it, and then the occasional music video. And with Pixar films, again, they'll do the deleted scenes and behind-the-scenes stuff on the Blu-ray. Um, and then on the DVD and Blu-ray, all we get are the Pixar shorts that preceded the movies in theaters, and then audio commentaries for the Pixar movies themselves. Hmm. Um, I'm kind of hoping they break that formula for later years. Um, but, um... Uh, but, uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet does have some very worthy bonus features, highlighted by the How We Broke the Internet documentary. So, that's our thoughts on Ralph Breaks the Internet. Um, it might suffer from a few comparisons. Um, a lot of people were afraid this was gonna be another Emoji movie. Trust me, this is a thousand times better than the Emoji movie. Yes! I conveying social media and internet stuff. Um... It might suffer, so it might suffer from a few comparisons and the downgrading of a few key characters, uh, but otherwise, Ralph Breaks the Internet, if you're going to watch one sequel from the Disney Animated Features canon, this has to be it. 2018 proved that with both Incredibles 2 and Ralph Breaks the Internet, that you can do a worthy sequel if you have a good story with great characters. Um, so definitely check out both Incredibles 2 and Ralph Breaks the Internet, and uh, here's hoping they can continue this trend of really good sequels with Toy Story 4 and Frozen 2 later this year. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the end of our Disney Animation Reviews video series. I really appreciate everyone who's been watching these <coughs> videos and supporting me. Um, if you want to learn more, I'm on Facebook, so you can uh, email me there. I also have a playlist for all these reviews on YouTube in case you missed a few. And I hope, and I encourage you to keep watching these movies, and uh, keep watching Disney, and uh, here's to more to come in the future. And Jordan, I want to thank you for joining me for the times you got to join me. It's been a lot of fun doing these videos together. Yeah. Well, that's all the time we have today, kids. Always remember, when you wish upon a star, your dreams come true. Get up!